everybody. Good morning. I guess it's still morning. Uh, like you said, my name is Dan Applestone. I went from being a materials scientist. Now I'm a CEO of a quite thrilling <laughs> me mechanical engineering company. We build manufacturing tools. So the hardwarest of hardware, we build tools so that other people can build hardware. Uh, and I am a maker. Uh, even before I knew Dale, I was a kid in my own garage building things. Um, I've been doing it for quite some time. And I was going to talk about the garage of the future, but then I realized there's probably a ton of things that are going on right now that you don't even know about. And these are things that are going on right under your nose. And um, it's really important because it's going to affect how all of your companies do development in hardware. This is the tale of two neighbors. It's a project that me and my neighbor are working on. So what you see in this image is a microarray. So this is 900 test tubes in one square centimeter. Each of these test tubes is like a well in this piece of aluminum, and they are 125 nanoliters deep. Why this is innovative and why this is amazing that we could create this on my dining room table is that this allows my neighbor, who does research in biology, to take a single bead with an RNA strand attached to it. He uses a desktop CNC machine, a computer-controlled machine, to deposit each of those beads with the RNA strand into each of these wells. After that, he uses the same machine to put one cell in each of these wells. And he lets them grow and sees which ones adopt the RNA. Then he hits it with UV light and sees which ones are fluorescing with the right kind of indicator. This is happening in the garage. And this is, this is super important because it used to cost $3,000 every time he wanted to do an experiment. So instead of that, we used a desktop tool. We spent a couple hours over beers while our you know, spouses were hanging out. And we built something that reduced the cost of running an experiment by 10,000 times. And so what, what I'm pointing out with this is that the, the rate at which industry is building sample holders for biotechnology is too slow, because he and I can sit at our table or in our garage and build something that is better and cheaper, such that he can accelerate the rate of drug discovery for, he, he works on psoriasis, so accelerate the rate of drug discovery for psoriasis. And I was thinking yesterday when I was in here, uh, you know, listening to the talk, that I heard 30,000 diseases. And I thought, wow, if we're moving at one rate, trying to solve, you know, trying to cure 30,000 diseases, how much faster could we be moving if instead of spending three grand on each experiment, we spend fractions of cents on each experiment. And that got me even more excited about what I do. So the reason why this is possible and the reason why it matters is now any person in their garage for about 20 grand can have equipment that allows them to do research faster than any university. We can also develop hardware and connected devices faster than any company and deliver those devices directly to our consumers. And the how we do it is there are machines that do high precision mechanical parts. So it used to be that you had to go to a factory to build high precision metal things in whatever material. This is no longer true. You can do whatever you want <laughs> yourself without interfacing with a factory. We can also build electronics in our garages. We can use the most cutting edge chipsets, shipped directly to us through Alibaba or DigiKey, right to our house, build products, put our firmware on them, and deliver them to customers without ever having to ask permission. We can also 3D print now for less than 10K. These machines are like $5,000. You can print plastic that is complicated and is precise enough that it can be used in dental applications. And this is the garage of the now. All of these technologies are possible. And the crazy thing is that we do it with knowledge that we learn from our peers on the internet for free. MIT open courseware, we learn engineering, and we also design all of these things with software that's either free or costs less than cable, which never was possible before. But 
even though that we can do this in our garages, I think that we should level the playing field. We should open this up to all the companies, big and small, and everybody should be able to innovate as fast as possible. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk, you know, I'll, t I'll tell you about the machines that do this and what separates them. Because it's not just about one Swiss Army knife machine that you put on every engineer's desk and they solve all the problems. It's really about understanding the array of what's necessary. You need a hammer, you need a screwdriver, you need a sawzall sometimes, you need duct tape. <laughs> so you need an array of tools, but they're all inexpensive and easy to use. And if they're not on the desks of your engineers, you're probably innovating too slowly. Full disclosure, this is the machine that my company builds. It is a desktop CNC mill. This was developed for DARPA for education purposes, but now we've taken it pro and put it, put it out into the world. You can cut pieces in whatever material you'd like, aluminum, plastic, things like that, circuit boards, and you can do it with 25 micron accuracy. This is also really important. So you've heard a lot about 3D printers probably, but this is the real deal. So being able to print with resin, where you shine a laser into resin and that hardens a material, you can get now the resolution that you need to do medical research, you need to do to make crowns and bridges and also jewelry. These tools are now available. The next one is the laser cutter. So if you're doing 2D cutting and you have a craft business or you're wanting to prototype packaging or you're wanting to prototype in wood or things that are typically hard to have manufactured for you, you also need a laser cutter. And if you're wanting to cut big things, like big pieces of wood, big pieces of metal, you're probably going to need a router if you're going to cut those things. And the last one is finally the, the, the quick and dirty, the 3D printer that you've all seen. The difference between this 3D printer and the old one is, or the, the previous one that I talked about, was this one prints with a filament. So you heat up a plastic, deposit layers. Most of us have seen that. It's still valuable, even if you're doing high resolution work. Sometimes you just want to spit out a print really quickly. So all of these machines, you add them all less. It's less than 20 grand. And with that, I can have a garage which allows me to innovate very quickly in hardware. And so just like we saw with software, where people got access to code, people could build websites without asking for permission, and you know, the world kind of got Zuckerberg by these people who came out of nowhere and built these big businesses, the same exact thing is going to happen with hardware, and it's going to happen with these tools, because now they're good enough that they can produce something where you can't tell the difference whether it was built by a large company or in somebody else's garage. And I think this is really important because it means that people right now are building things that they need and they're delivering them directly to the people that need them also. And they don't have to ask for permission. They can build very small quantities of these things. And I think it's really transformational where everybody can have a say. They can look at the world around them. They can see the problems that exist. And now they actually have the tools to innovate those solutions. So the last thing I want to leave you with is a question about education, actually, because my origins were with DARPA, building these machines for uh, an educational program to put these manufacturing tools in the classroom. And I want, I really want to know the answer of, is it worth it to spend 40 grand a year going to college? Or is it better to spend 20 grand and spend four years in your garage building a business and innovating in hardware and accelerating the rate of research in biotech? And I think that's an open question, but I, I would love for us to all think about that because um, I hope that we choose to prepare this next generation of people to take on uh, the level of innovation and hardware that we've seen in software over the past 10 years. Um, so thank you. Okay.